everyone, I'm back with your Astro Basics. Today we are talking about the sign of Gemini. We've done Aries, we've done Taurus, we're going in order. We are talking about the sign of Gemini. So Gemini is an air sign. Air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And they are definitely signs that uh, focus more on thoughts and communication and intellect. Think of them as raven claws of the zodiac community. So um, Gemini is a mutable air sign, so it's the airiest of the air signs, and it has here Gemini, I think. This is from the Black Moon Astrology cards, just in case you're wondering. So Gemini is definitely all about what's in here. It's not so much about feelings, it's more about the head than the heart, not saying that um, they don't have heart because they do, but um, definitely more about thoughts, and sometimes their thoughts can run away from them. So very intellectual Geminis, but they tend to have lots of different interests and not just one particular interest. They're very good at writing. They're very good at public speaking, communication. They like to read usually. They usually have a large collection of books, but they're usually on a variety of subjects. Geminis love to have all sorts of interests and they often can't seem to stick on one. They like to skip from one to the other. So they often end up as jack of all trades, master of none. Um, but at the same time, they also can end up as really well-rounded and able to pick from different areas of their life to combine together to make something unique. They're very talkative, they're very funny, um, and they are definitely communicative. It's, it's pretty hard to find a quiet Gemini, that's for sure. Um, so that is, that's the basic sort of description of a Gemini. Um, let's go through the different planets. Um, in the sign of Gemini. So I've got here the, I never remember the name of this deck, the Solar something cards. I will find that again. It's an old deck. I don't even have the box anymore. I've had this forever. I think it's out of print. I'm sorry if you're looking for it. I think it's out of print, but um, it is, I, hopefully they'll make, they'll make it again because it is really good deck. Okay, so we have um, Sun in Gemini, which if you watch the telescopes, you would have seen this card. It's about versatility and Gemini is versatile and very flexible like this person is here. They have, like I said, lots of interests and they're able to adapt quickly to things. So they are the kind of people that may go from job to job and not have a problem with it. They may move around, then they don't have a problem with it. They like variety. And in fact, they get bored if they don't get variety. They don't, they're not so big on routine. I mean, it depends every Gemini, depending on the makeup of the rest of their chart may be different, but generally speaking, they like to do things differently and uh, they're very good at going with the flow when it comes to things. So Moon and Gemini is about adaptability, which is kind of another way of saying versatility. But with the Moon rules emotions, so if you have Moon in Gemini, this means that you are definitely somebody who is emotionally adaptable. Um, you don't pine too long over somebody. You're also able to make changes quickly, whereas other people, changes can be hard. They may have to, you know, their head can get around it, but it may take a while emotionally to catch up. It's not so much a problem for you. You're definitely a, like a lot more adaptable. Here we have Shiva with his, he's dancing. He's got a bunch of different things in his hand. I think that's supposed to be Shiva. He's dancing on top of somebody. So you're able to conquer things quickly and make changes very fast. If things are destroyed, you are resilient. You're able to pick yourself up and move on again. So um, definitely a strength for you. Um, let's see, Mercury in Gemini. Now, Mercury is the planet that rules Gemini. Every sign has a planet that rules it. Um, and Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Here we have excitement. So we have uh, this king kind of guy on a horse. Um, and he's, he's trumpeting out. We've got the tower here. So you like excitement. You are definitely, Mercury's about communication. If you have Mercury in Gemini, you are chatty for sure. You like excitement. Uh, the downside of that is gossip, of course. Um, you may enjoy things like watching celebrity type television and stuff because you like all sorts of excitement or things that are shocking. You like things that shock people, uh, but definitely somebody who enjoys communication, who's very, very good at it and able to get their enthusiasm across to others to inspire others as well. Venus and Gemini, let's see here, is about flattery. Words matter to Venus, uh, those with their Venus in Gemini. 
you're all about the flattery. Um, if somebody loves you, they better tell you. It's not about showing or giving gifts, although you don't mind that either. But they need to tell you. They need to tell you in words. And you're maybe somebody where the downfall of this is second guessing everything, like playing that um, voice message back. What was the tone in his voice? How did he say that? Or how did she say that? You know, it's um, definitely someone that enjoys being told things and will look at every word really carefully. You also want someone that engages your mind. You don't want someone who's boring or stuck in routine. You want someone that has um, a lot of interest just like you do. Uh, Mars in Gemini says decision. So one of the things with Gemini, because it is a mutable sign, is sometimes it has a hard time making a decision. It flits back and forth between things, whereas other mutable signs um, might take time to decide. For you, it's like you make a decision and then you second guess it, and then you make another decision and second guess it. So with Mars and Gemini, it's really saying that you have to look strategically at things before you rush into making a decision. We've got the chessboard here to stand for that. Um, we've got, it looks like a dark door. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Is that a grave threshold? Uh, and so it's saying you need to, you know, before you rush into decisions, you need to, um, to, just to look at them carefully and strategically. Mercury, Mars in Gemini also tends to rush into action as well and to do things quite quickly. And that can be good at times, but at other times, obviously, that can be a negative. Jupiter in Gemini has bluff. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't think I would use the word bluff for Jupiter and Gemini. To me, Jupiter and Gemini is someone who's lucky at a lot of different things. You have a lot of little pieces of good luck when it comes to things like gambling. Um, but it's also um, one where you are a really skilled communicator with people. Um, and maybe this is why they put the word bluff here, because you may be able to talk circles around people in order to get what you want. Jupiter and Gemini shows luck in communication, luck with siblings. It's about luck in writing. Um, if you're in journalism, anything like that that has to do with communication, you're going to have a lot of luck in this area. You kind of have the gift of the golden tongue, so to speak. Saturn in Gemini says concentration. So Saturn's about where we have to work hard in our lives. It's where we struggle, but ultimately where we do get a large reward if we work for it. So we have concentration here. We have what appears to be kind of a little impy thing on the lips with some swords. And then there's a star caught in a web. So for Geminis, because your energy is very... Um, very all over the place sometimes, but you have lots of interests, a variety of interests. Sometimes you may struggle with concentrating on one thing at a time or spending enough energy on something in order to get the payback for it. So you spend, you get enthusiastic about something, you put the energy in and then you move to something else. So you never really see the full results because you've spread your energy around. So Saturn in Gemini um, is asking you to concentrate more of your energy. It's asking you to kind of put your energy, a little bit more focus onto those things in order to see a payoff happen. Um, with the lips here, it also reminds me that you may struggle at times with getting your words across. Um, you may, because Gemini is all about communication, there may be miscommunication or hurtful communication, or there may be gossip, things like that. Struggles around communication may come up. So that is um, my little wrap up of the sign of Gemini. Basically, um, I do know that there are a lot of, it seems like in the tarot community, there are a lot of card readers who are Geminis, which doesn't surprise me because Geminis are so good at communicating and getting messages across to people and taking complex symbols and making them into um, something that is easy for others to understand. And they're really, really good at communicating and writing. There's also a lot of writers who are Geminis as well. And I think the trick is, if you are Gemini or do have a lot of planets and Geminis in your chart, is to look at how you can turn the communication into a strength for you, but also how you can turn your variety of interests, because you have lots of them, into a strength um, and not as something where you're dissipating your energy. How can you kind of bring all those things together in a way that kind of is more holistic or more well-rounded? So... That's my little take on Gemini. If you have any other thoughts about Gemini's, if you are Gemini, 
put in the, um, the comments below. Let me know what you think if you have any questions as well. And again, as always, peace, love, and rock and roll. Love you all. Have a great week.